Well, pretty cold, but here's another excuse to hold your family, friends, and loved ones a little tighter. Today is National Hugging Day. We realize that might be difficult during the pandemic, but give an extra embrace or two to those living in your home. Hugging is a universal gesture of love, and science backs up what we already know about them, that hugging really does make us feel better. So you're feeling down in the dumps or just need a little pick-me-up, try to find someone in your home to hug it out. Yeah, you know those air hugs are just not mm -hmm. the same. They're you not know? the you same. You kind of like air hug it out. <laughs> eh, doesn't really do it. I can't wait until I can hug my Nona, my grandma. Yes. That is going to be so such special. a good feeling. Yeah. All right, coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, as Joe Biden takes over as the President of the United States of America, what some of his first executive actions will mean for you. Plus, where Washington stands as the state aims to ramp up vaccinations by the thousands. Good Morning Northwest continues right now. From Camp KVU Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Good morning, Northwest, and thanks for joining us early on this Thursday morning. I'm Monica Petrozelli, checking in with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. Kristen, you've been tracking a little bit of snow this morning. Yes, the winter weather has returned out the door this morning, so just a heads up. Again, icy spots expected early this morning. So let's talk more about that forecast for today as we get you out the door with that live look. This is from Richland's Columbia Point. Noticing a little bit of a light mix early on at least in the Tri-Cities in the Columbia Basin initially. But you could see the snow that we have from Yakima on to Sunnyside this morning. Not expecting much from this, but it really doesn't take much to create some of those icy conditions. Looking at the chilly rain from Hermiston further to our south into Pendleton this morning. Uh, so again, just plan on the wet weather for the first half of the day. But there are your current temperatures. Still sitting in at 34 for the Tri-Cities. 32 though in Walla Walla with 36 in Hermiston. And then just a above that freezing mark as well for Yakima. So as you take a look ahead to your Thursday forecast, winter weather early, turning drier this afternoon, still staying cloudy though, and it is going to be a chilly afternoon with a high of 39. Now we could be looking at more winter weather ahead and could even impact that upcoming weekend. Your full forecast is coming up. Thank you, Kristen. Calling for unity and getting to work, President Joe Biden has already signed new executive actions. Whitney Wild reports on the orders and directives on an inauguration day that ended with a bang. A star-studded end to an historic inauguration day. This is a great nation. We're good people. And to overcome the challenges in front of us requires the most elusive of all things in a democracy. Unity. This is what President Joe Biden has called upon us to summon now. The courage to see beyond crisis, to do what is hard, to do what is good, to unite. President Joe Biden signing 15 executive actions and two agency actions, targeting many of former President Trump's policies. Some of the executive actions I'm going to be signing today are going to help change the course of the COVID crisis, and we're going to combat climate change in a way that we haven't done so far. Democrats have officially taken power in the executive and legislative branches of government. <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris making it official, swearing in three new Democratic senators, including John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock of Georgia, who tipped the balance of power in the Senate. You will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. I do. Congratulations. Now in the tradition of firsts, the first White House press briefing of the Biden-Harris administration highlighting the president's new executive actions and their plan to tackle the pandemic. The issue that he wakes up every day focused on is getting the pandemic under control. And President Biden asks that you wear a mask for the next 100 days. We heard the announcement from his new press secretary. To combat the deadly virus, the president launched his 100-day masking challenge, asking Americans to do their part and mask up for 100 days. He's doing his part as well, issuing a mask mandate that will require anyone visiting a federal building or federal land or using certain modes of public transportation to wear a mask. 
Here in the Pacific Northwest, Governor Inslee will be talking to reporters today. His office says he'll be giving an update at 2.30 on the 2021 legislative session and the state's COVID response. We'll have that on yaktrynews.com and on our CAP KVU Plus app. In Washington, people 65 and older are now eligible for the vaccine and those 50 and older if you live in a home with grandparents and grandchildren. UW Medicine has already scheduled more than 10,000 appointments with people People racing to get their shot. I'm a grandma. Um, my daughter, the mother of my grandchildren, is a doctor, so she's she's been vaccinated. So I can potentially go see my grandkids. So I'm I'm happy about that. I'm happy that I'll be protected. So hopefully I won't get sick. Statewide health officials are giving out around 14,000 doses of the vaccine every day. The goal, though, is to triple that to more than 45,000 a day. Oregon right now is at around 12,000 a day. And roughly 5% of the population of both Oregon and Washington have been vaccinated. We have the very latest data, local vaccine news, and sign-up instructions at yaktrynews.com slash vaccine. Well, during President Joe Biden's inauguration ceremony yesterday, an image of Senator Bernie Sanders sitting on a folding chair went viral. That apparently inspired the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame to create their latest product, which is a figure of the independent senator from Vermont, complete with a mask. Officials with the company say the individually numbered Bernie bobbleheads are expected to be available in May, and they cost $25 each. <laughs> Look at that mask. They're all getting their own bobbleheads Oh, they these certainly days. are. Somebody's collecting these things, I'm sure. Oh, but. I'm sure, too. All right, let's take a quick break here in Good Morning Northwest, but first, let's take that live look outside and there is the snow that is coming down early this morning as we give you that live look from downtown Yakima plan on some icy roads I have a look at how long this winter weather is expected to last with your full forecast it's coming up plus when we return Central Washington University's barge hall gleaming with lights last night as part of a special tribute to COVID victims we'll take you there next After his inauguration ceremony, President Biden, Vice President Harris, and former Presidents Bush, Clinton, and Obama attended a wreath-laying ceremony at the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. Back here at home, a memorial to remember and honor those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. Central Washington University's Barge Hall was illuminated in amber lights as part of President Biden's call for memorials of support and remembrance around the country for COVID-19 victims. Well, it seems like it just opened now. It's closed. The coronavirus testing site on Eli Street in Kennewick shut down yesterday. Benton Franklin Health District says the National Guard troops who were staffing the site are being reassigned. This site had only been open for a couple of weeks after it moved from the Hapo Center. Now the only mass testing site in the Tri-Cities is at CBC West on Argent Road in Pasco. Governor Inslee designated the Benton County Fairgrounds as a mass vaccination site, but that won't be set up until at least next week. The Benton Franklin Health District sent out this message saying, please don't just show up at the fairgrounds yet hoping to get vaccinated. Nobody's there right now, and they're still working to get information from the state about how the process is going to work. We're keeping in touch with them, and we'll update you as soon as more details are available. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, do you have a business or product that deserves more recognition? How you could take part in Shark Tank, next. Welcome back everyone. Washington State Hospital administrators are worried about having enough space to give COVID shots to Governor Inslee's desired 45,000 people a day. As we move into these next phases, in partnering with our community partners to put on really huge mass vaccination clinics because we believe that as we expand to more and more phases, more millions of people within our state, that it will require partnership with other people. Kittitas County is planning to give out around 2,000 doses of the vaccine next week, but you do have to make an appointment online using the Sign Up Genius website. We have all the information about how to do that on our website, yaktrynews.com. 
Umatilla County is getting a thousand doses of the Moderna vaccine for a mass vaccination tomorrow at the Pendleton Convention Center. But only certain people can go, mainly those with developmental disabilities, their caregivers, health care workers and home health providers. It's important to note this is not for other groups of the phase one or phase B, such as educators and anyone over 65. Tomorrow's event starts at eight and ends at six. Well, there's another round of Paycheck Protection Program loans available for small businesses. These loans can be forgiven if businesses use the money on certain eligible expenses like rent and paying employees. This time around, the loans will be smaller, up to $2 million instead of 10. And you'll have to show that your business dropped by at least 25% in 2020 compared to 2019. Many businesses say that won't be hard. It's been hard for a lot of small businesses. I think small music venues in particular have been hit really, really hard. We have worked with uh, the PPPs last time. We will probably look into it again this time, absolutely. It's a big help, no question about it. We're thrilled that it's out there. You have until the end of March to apply, and it doesn't matter if you've gotten a Paycheck Protection Loan already in the past. The young woman who made history as the youngest poet to read at a presidential inauguration will make another live appearance on national TV right here on Cap View. Being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. And that is 22-year-old Amanda Gorman reciting There is Always Light, a poem she wrote for the ceremony. I was really nervous when I was doing it, so I'm kind of glad it's over. Um, but it was a beautiful day, beautiful to hear everybody, and I'm just so grateful to have been part of the ceremony. Coming up later, a GMA exclusive interview one on one with Robin Roberts live on Good Morning America. That starts at 7 right after Good Morning Northwest. The hit ABC show Shark Tank is casting for a new season and wants you to apply. The show is looking for driven entrepreneurs, creators, and innovators who can pitch their breakthrough business ideas in hopes of landing investment funds. Think about it. Your business on national TV, millions of viewers, and your family and friends watching at home right here on Cap View. And you don't have to leave home to apply. We've got the link at eactrynews.com. Just look for the Shark Tank story. Now, Cap gave you first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. And at 616, the winter weather is back across the area. You can see the snow that is coming down around downtown Yakima this morning, making for a bit of a slick commute, maybe some icy roads out there. Let's switch over to Skywatch radar and show you what we are tracking. So a lot of that snow, mainly along 82 here, Sunnyside, Grandview, and the Yakima. We're now seeing that transition. I just peeked outside the station early, the, uh, just couple minutes ago and we are noticing a little bit of a wintry mix so a little bit of some light snow mixing in at times uh, from Kennewick over into Richland so we will see that transition over to a little bit of some light snow early this morning the snow though is coming down from Sunnyside top initiative as I mentioned over into Yakima maybe up to a half inch of snow is expected in some spots and then we have some of that snow as well from Walla Walla down into Milton Freewater Pendleton seeing that transition over to some snow but still a little bit of some light rain from Yelp uh, Umatilla and down into Hermiston where those temperatures are a couple of degrees still above that freezing mark. And all that active weather for the Pacific Northwest back over into the Cascades. There's the snow that is coming down there as well. There's no advisories or warnings in place. Again, a lot of this will be very, very light and looking to move out for the second half of the day today. So let's get you over to Futurecast as we time this winter weather out, taking a look at how long it is expected to last. So there's a look at 8 o'clock this morning, still coming down at times from the Tri-Cities uh, into the foothills. By lunchtime, most locations going back to some drier weather with the exception from Walla Walla down into Pendleton. And then by this afternoon, mostly cloudy, maybe a sprinkle or two left over in some spots. But by Friday, we'll see those improvements. A few clouds left over early in the morning and then turning mostly sunny by a Friday afternoon. And then a lot of sunshine is in the forecast as we start off your weekend, at least on Saturday, it is going to be sunny. The second half there on Sunday, we could be looking at another chance for some winter weather. Now, we're not expecting a whole lot with this system early this morning. Most locations are dusting, maybe a half inch in some locations. 
but as I mentioned, drier conditions for the second half of the day today. 34 right now, Tri-Cities with 32 in Walla Walla and 33 over in Yakima this morning. And a little bit of some fog that has developed, especially from Walla Walla. Visibility is less than one mile and a similar story back over in Yakima. So there are your temperatures for this afternoon with those upper 30s for Toppenish and Yakima. 39 today in the Tri-Cities with 38 in Connell Con and 39 degrees for Prosser and some upper 30s for Dayton, Walla Walla and down into Pendleton. So overnight tonight, we're going to have a dry night, just mainly cloudy. So those temperatures fall through the upper 20s to near 30 degrees. So your seven day forecast as we look ahead into your weekend, it's going to be a sunny day on Saturday at 40. That wintry mix developing for the second half of the day on Sunday. Dry start Monday and then another chance for some winter weather on Tuesday. And your seven day forecast for Yakima going back to some drier weather Friday into the start of your weekend. A sunny sky there on Saturday at 38 and a wintry mix expected second half of the day on Sunday at 36. Thank you, Kristen. 619. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up as President Trump ends his era in the White House, his daughter is starting an exciting new chapter of her own. Her big announcement next. Welcome back, everyone. President Trump's youngest daughter has a big announcement ahead of her father's departure from the White House. Tiffany Trump is getting married. The 27-year-old took to Instagram to announce her happy news, saying she's excited for the next chapter. The picture shows Trump and her fiancé, 23-year-old Michael Bolos, at the White House. Well, people are having a little bit of fun with Bernie Sanders' inaugural attire. The Vermont senator's clutch mittens are creating a buzz on social media. Twitter went wild for the look, saying Sanders looked like a grandpa headed to the post office. BuzzFeed says the mittens were made by Vermont teacher Jen Ellis. She gave them to him more than a year ago, and he also wore them on the campaign trail. The mittens are made from repurposed wool sweaters and lined with fleece made from recycled plastic bottles. And the jacket is made by Burton Snowboards, headquartered in Vermont. The company tweeted too, pitching its jacket, mentioning the mittens, commenting on the pants, but taking no credit for the footwear. The caption reads, shoes, model zone. Sanders' wife tweeted, Vermont jacket, Vermont gloves, Vermont common sense. All right, it is 624, and it is time now to take a look at our reason to smile today. So with some of the winter weather moving through, I think this cat has the, the perfect idea. Now, I, what I love about this cat in this picture, the, the tongue that's sticking out, you know how cats, when they're... They're sleeping. Oh, you can see that there it is. Just kind of sticking, sticking out. Oh, hi. I love it when my cat makes that face. <laughs> he just looks so happy. I know. Pretty, pretty relaxed there, I'd say. Yeah, taking that midday nap. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, thank you to Kenya for submitting this photo. If you have one that you would love to share, you can head over to yakchinese.com. We have our photos of the day section. You can submit your photos there. That's right. We'd love to see those photos. So keep them coming. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, Kennewick police were out at Columbia Park yesterday on the lookout for a local woman who's been missing since summer. And the snow is coming down around our area this morning. A look at how long this winter weather is expected to last. That full forecast coming up during the 6.30 half hour. Coming up on Good Morning Northwest, why Benton County prosecutors aren't charging anyone in the death of a young mother killed in a crash. And we are waking up this morning to snow flying in some locations. More details in that Thursday forecast. It's all coming up. From Camp KV Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Hello everyone, you're watching Good Morning Northwest at 6.30. I'm Monica Petrozelli. Let's head over to that forecast with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. Uh, Kristen, you mentioned snow. Bad news for me, my heater stopped working oh, that's again. That's good news, especially <laughs> today and in the next couple of days, some colder temperatures moving in. Now, if you're heading out the door this morning, plan on some icy roads with that snow. So let's get you started first. That live look, Legend Sky Kim Network there and from Richland's Columbia Point and a little bit of a wintry mix around the Tri-Cities early this morning. Majority of the snow that has been falling around Sunnyside, Yakima picking up some of that light snow as well. And we're seeing that transition along the foothills of the Blues to some light snow as well. Still a little bit of some chilly rainfall though around Hermiston uh, and down 
further to our south. So there are your current temperatures hovering still at 34 in the Tri-Cities, down to 32 now in Walla Walla and 33 in Yakima. So many locations are right around that freezing mark, which is why some of those roads could be a bit slick uh, today. So first half of the day, we'll see that winter weather turning drier this afternoon, mostly cloudy, but still a cold day with a high of 39. The extended forecast as we look ahead into the upcoming weekend, we could see another chance for some winter weather. I'll have more details in your full forecast. It's coming up. Thank you so much, Kristen. Well, Benton County prosecutors are not charging anyone in the death of Ashley Guevara. The young mother fell out of a moving car last October. Then another car hit her. Cap K View's Madeline Hagen asked why and heard from the prosecutor's office and Ashley's family who were hoping for a different answer. The pain of losing Ashley Guevara is still clear. Everybody's just kind of scrambling day by day, trying to be there for one another. Nothing's ever the same. At this very intersection, Deputy Prosecutor Andrew Clark just says you know, video shows actually. Ashley opening the passenger door as the driver was turning left. And immediately our understanding is the back passengers yelled that she'd fell out and then she immediately pulled into a parking lot. You know, she didn't flee the scene or anything like that. The driver's actions, Clark says, are okay under law. In the hit and run statute specifically approves of people moving their vehicles onto adjacent streets and into parking lots and not obstructing the roadway with their vehicle. Ashley's cousin Tiffany Duggar says friends tried to wave down oncoming traffic so they could get to her. But one driver allegedly didn't see them, ran over Ashley and kept going. Her family wants someone held accountable. The impact was so loud. The camera was across the street and you could hear it as if somebody took a hammer to the camera. But under the law in the state of Washington, if you drive negligently and it results in a collision that results in death, it is not vehicle homicide. There was no evidence of impairment. The speed estimates were 32 miles an hour. So there was no weaving, no disobeying traffic lights. Clark says his office cannot prove that the second driver knew what he hit. And at first, there wasn't apparent damage to the car. It was not until they got it up on jacks and got underneath it. They brought in the WSP forensic unit to find forensic evidence. And that's how they're able to tell that, yes, we actually have the right vehicle. It's not the answer Ashley's family had hoped for. We're upset, obviously, because the fact that the person that hit her drove off. I don't see how there can be no justice in that. Us deciding not to file criminal charges is not us condoning what happened. It's saying that there's a piece that we would have to prove that we can't. We deserve justice. She deserves justice. She died and she shouldn't have died and she leaves behind her baby boy. And Ashley's family says they're looking into other options like forwarding the case to the state level. Stay with Cap KV Local News for any developments in this story. Kennewick Police brought in a team yesterday from Spokane to help them search Columbia Park. They were looking for 44-year-old Jessica Adams. She's been missing since August, although investigators didn't ask for help in finding her until just a couple weeks ago. Kennewick Police say Adams used to visit Columbia Park near Edison Street on a regular basis. Anyone with information on where she could be is asked to contact the Kennewick Police Department. Washington State Hospital administrators are worried about having enough space to give COVID shots to Governor Inslee's desired 45,000 people a day. As we move into these next phases, in partnering with our community partners to put on really huge mass vaccination clinics because we believe that as we expand to more and more phases, more millions of people within our state, that it will require partnership with other people. Kittitas County is planning to give out around 2,000 doses of the vaccine next week, but you have to make an appointment online using the Sign Up Genius website. We have all the information on how to do that on our website, yaktrynews.com. Umatilla County is getting 1,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine for a mass vaccination tomorrow at the Pendleton Convention Center, but only certain people can go, mainly those with developmental disabilities, their caregivers, health care workers, and home health providers. It's important to note this is not for other groups a part of the Phase 1A or Phase 1B, such as educators and anyone over 65. Tomorrow's event starts at 8 and ends at 6.
There's another round of Paycheck Protection Program loans available for small businesses. These loans can be forgiven if businesses use the money on certain eligible expenses like rent and paying employees. This time around, the loans will be smaller up to $2 million instead of 10 and you'll have to show that your business dropped by at least 25% in 2020 compared to 2019. Many businesses say that won't be hard. It's been hard for a lot of small businesses. I think small music venues in particular have been hit really, really hard. We have worked with uh, the PPPs last time. We will probably look into it again this time, absolutely. It's a big help, no question about it. We're thrilled that it's out there. Now you have until the end of March to apply, and it doesn't matter if you've already gotten a Paycheck Protection Loan in the past. Switching gears at 635, you can now bring your Animal Crossing Island life to the real world. Nintendo is teaming up with ColourPop Cosmetics to launch a makeup collection inspired by the video game Animal Crossing's New Horizons. The collaboration reportedly features 11 products, including eyeshadow palettes, tinted lip sets, blushes, and glitter gel. The new line launches on the 28th. ColourPop is no stranger to collaborations. They make makeup inspired by Disney characters, Sailor Moon, and Star Wars. Let's take a live look outside. And it is kind of a snowy scene there from downtown Yakima this morning. So many folks are waking up to some winter weather. Look at how long it's expected to last. That full forecast that's coming up. Plus when we return following Biden's inauguration, the Pacific Northwest Democratic Party headquarters was targeted. We'll show you what happened right after this. Hours after President Biden implored the nation to come together, protesters marched through the Northwest's largest cities. In downtown Seattle, they set a flag on fire, shattered windows at a federal courthouse, tagged buildings, damaged cars, and threw things into the street. Some protested immigration and customs enforcement. Others were rallying against President Biden and police. At least one person was arrested. And in Oregon, a number of people have been arrested after protesters vandalized the Democratic Party headquarters in Portland. They were caught on camera smashing windows. The rioters protested against the new president and law enforcement. Police say the group split from a larger protest at the city's Revolution Hall. There were scuffles with police during the Revolution Hall rally as well. The Acoma Salvation Army says nearly twice as many people need food now than at the beginning of the pandemic. Volunteers are working to help those families with food assistance. They held a large-scale drive through food distribution yesterday at State Fair Park. Upwards of 1,000 families received enough frozen meals to feed a family of four for a few days, plus bottled drinks and face masks. The demand was so high, cars began lining up at 7 a.m. hours early. It's a little bit shocking because I think a lot of us don't realize exactly how many of our neighbors are in need of food like this. If you missed it, the Yakima Salvation Army Food Bank is open weekdays from 2 to 4. They're at 9 South 6th Avenue and have a drive through The only thing you'll need to do is give them your name and birthday. Coming up next, President Biden has already put his signature on more than a dozen executive actions. What you need to know and reaction from a local lawmaker. Now, CAPKVU First Alert Weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. And at 644 on this Thursday morning, winter weather has returned to the area around the Pacific Northwest. Even at the lower elevations, you can see right now in downtown Yakima, the snow that is flying, sticking a little bit to some of those roads, so making for a bit of an icy commute, slick commute to work early this morning. Uh, but there's also a wintry mix in other locations, including portions of the Tri-City seeing that wintry mix. You can see that snow around Sunnyside back into Yakima and also snow along the foothills of the blue. So a closer look here in the Tri-Cities trying to transition over to all snowfall, and there is that possibility, but temperatures are a degree or two just above freezing for the Tri-City. So Richland and Kennewick looking at that wintry mix. A little bit of some light snow mixing in at times. And then Grandview, sunny side, even over into Yakima. That snow is flying for you. And then also looking at that 
uh, light snow from Walla Walla down into Milton Freewater. Even Pendleton noticing that changeover for some uh, from some rain to to, to some snow showers right now. And then still some chilly rain, Umatilla and Hermiston. That's where those temperatures are right around 36 uh, degrees this morning. So there's the active weather around the Pacific Northwest. Just checking some of our mountain passes. Most are good to go. No travel restrictions currently uh, for Snoqualmie Pass. There's no advisories, no warnings in place. So a lot of this will be winding down over the next couple of hours. So we're going to see a lot of improvement from the winter weather that we have out there this morning. So let's get you over to Futurecast. You'll see as we take you throughout your morning, there's eight, nine o'clock, still a little bit of some snow left over. And then the snow continues for uh, the foothills of the blues, but really drying out from the Tri-Cities back over into Yakima. The second half of the day, just overall mostly cloudy. Can't roll out maybe a sprinkle or two lingering, but we should just have a lot of cloud cover and just a chilly afternoon with those highs in the upper 30s. Now, as far as snowfall amounts go with this system, most folks may be a dusting up to a half inch in some locations. So again, not expecting much. The majority of the snow first half of the day today and some drier conditions by this afternoon. Now here are your current temperatures. We're at 34 in the Tri-Cities, 32 in Walla Walla. Hermiston, our warmest spot at 36. This is why some chilly rain showers for you this morning. And then sitting in at 33 degrees for both Toppenish and Yakima. And there's also a little bit of some fog that has popped up around the foothills of the Blues and also into the eastern slopes of the Cascades. Yakima, your visibility down to about one mile this morning. Temperatures though for this afternoon, just gonna be a chilly day with 38 for Yakima and 39 degrees in Toppenish, upper 30s from Connell into the Tri-Cities, 40 degrees for Hanford, 38 for Dayton, and then 37 in Walla Walla and also for Pendleton. So overnight tonight, it's going to be a dry night, mainly cloudy, upper 20s to near 30 degrees. So there is your seven day. We'll have some sunshine returning Friday into the start of your weekend. Another chance for a wintry mix developing later in the day on Sunday. Dry start on Monday and then more winter weather is in the forecast by Tuesday. And then your seven day for Yakima, enjoying a lot of sunshine, especially to start off your weekend there on Saturday at 38. And then that winter weather returns the second half of the day on Sunday at 36. Thank you, Kristen. Well, President Joe Biden is getting down to business quickly. Just hours after his inauguration, he signed 17 executive actions in the Oval Office. Many of them are reversing some of President Trump's signature policies. That includes stopping construction of the southern border wall and reversing a travel ban on some measly Muslim countries. Biden also began the process of rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, and he put the brakes on Trump's withdrawal from the World Health Organization. On the coronavirus, Biden imposed a mask mandate on federal property, a break from Trump, who downplayed the virus. The new president also named a COVID response coordinator who will oversee the distribution of vaccines and medical supplies. Representative Nan Newhouse of Washington's 4th Congressional District offered a statement in response to the inauguration. He said in part, quote, as President Biden takes his oath of office to become the 46th president of the United States, my commitment remains strong to stand up for the people of central Washington and rural communities across the country. Dot, dot, dot. It is clear we have a lot of work to do, end quote. Newhouse, one of Washington state's three Republican representatives in Congress, recently voted in favor of the impeachment of former President Trump. Coming up, a young poet stole the show during Joe Biden's inauguration. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look.